In our last lesson, we got introduced to the idea of creating our own methods. And we are creating um, world-level methods that would come up here under the Methods tab uh, that we could create ourselves rather than to be depending upon the methods that were provided for us by the people that designed the objects. And in this lesson, we're going to be doing the same thing. We're still going to be creating our own world-level methods, but we're going to be adding something called parameters to our methods. So before we get into making this particular program, um, let's talk about exactly what, what a parameter is, because you kind of worked with them already a little bit before. So you can see we've gotten away from the uh, Alien Encounter program, and we've got a different sort of a program here. We've got ourselves some beetles. We've got, you can see from the object tree, a George beetle, a Lennon beetle, a Paul beetle, and a Ringo beetle. Okay, And the object of this particular program is to uh, get these beetles to play us a little, a little, uh, do a little concert for us. If I select one of these beetles, like for instance the George beetle, the George beetle object, and of course George beetle has a whole collection of methods associated with them, and if I, let's pick the first one, the move method, if I bring that into the program and let it go, the first thing that happens here is that I get asked a bit of a question. I, gotta, I get asked, what direction do you want George beetle to move? Direction is what we mean when we say the word parameter. So direction is an example of a parameter. It is some information that the method requires in order to do what it needs to do. And depending upon the information you provide, the method will do different things. Okay. So for instance here, obviously the, the parameter direction affects which direction George Beetle is going to move. And we can provide the information as being up, down, left, right, forward, or back. The information that you provide is referred to as the argument. So make sure you keep those two words straight. Uh, the argument is the actual information that you pass to the parameter. Okay. Actually, I'm not going to. I'm not going to use that. I just want to talk about parameters. The other thing we're going to do in this program is actually play a little bit with sound. Each of the Beatles here has an instrument. Okay. They're listed here: a bass, a guitar. Timbo bells, cowbell, which is a set of drums, and a sax. And if I click, I just want to draw some attention to each of these instruments. If I click on one of the instruments, and I click on the properties tab, and I take a look, I want to draw attention to the vehicle property. Notice that the vehicle property has been changed. Usually it says world. It's been changed to Ringo Beetle. So what that means is that the, this instrument, and each of them have been changed in this way, is attached to the Ringo Beetle. So we add, whatever we do with the, with the uh, Beetle objects, the instruments are going to go along. So if the Beetle object jumps up and down, the instrument's going to jump up and down. And that's already been done for you, so don't, don't worry too much about that. Okay. But I want to draw attention to another parameter down here. These are under sounds, and you, there might be a plus sign there. Or another property, I'm sorry. So click the plus sign if it's there. And what these are are sounds that are associated with each of the objects. And we can attach sounds to the objects. You can see there's none here right now. We have two options. We can import a sound, which can be a WAV file. And we can record sounds. And I've pre-gotten uh, some sounds for you. And you'll find those on the course database. You can just save them locally and, and use them, uh, along with this actual whole starting uh, program as well, so you don't have to create this from scratch. If you'll find it there. Okay, so I'm going to import a sound. So I click Import Sound, and uh, I have a folder here where I have all my sounds kind of uh, saved. You'll have to look for where you save your sound files when you got them off the course database. But I want this one to have a drum sound, so I'm going to click on Drum dot Wave, and then I'm going to say Import. And now there's a sound associated with that particular object. And if I want to get a little bit of a preview, there's a little green triangle here, which is a play button. I can play it. Do that one more time. So there's the sound associated with that. And what I want to do is I want to go through each of these instruments and attach a sound to each of them. So for the bass, I want to import a sound. And I want that to be uh, this bass guitar dot wave. And then uh, for guitar, import a sound. Uh, I want it to be guitar, wave, and uh, you're free to attach your own sounds, by the way, if you like. Uh, you know, it's, I just want you to know how to do it. Keep your sounds short. They actually shouldn't be more than about one second. Okay, so make sure if you do import your own sounds you do, that you keep them really short. And then I have to do the sax one, import a sound, and this is going to be sax dot wave. There we go. So now each of them has their sound. So I'm going to scroll back up. I'm going to click on world. 
click on the methods tab and what I want to do now is I want to get each of these beetles to move up and down and at the same time their instrument is going to play their particular sound and we're going to do this by creating some methods not so I'm going to create a new method and I'm going to do this first with the first beetle which is George beetle so George is going to perform a solo so these I'm going to call this method George solo I'm going to say okay okay so what do I want to happen in George solo well I want at the same time him to move up and down and for the instrument to play so these are going to happen at the same time so I drag in a do together block the actual up and down has to happen in that order first he has to move up and then he has to move down so those have to be in a do in order I click on the George Beetle I take the move method drag it over I want him to move up half a meter and I want the duration to be half a second I'm here and then I want George Beetle to move down, so I drag in another move, down, half a meter, and again I want the duration to be here, half a second. And at the same time he's going up and down, I want the instrument to play um, its sound. So uh, George's instrument, we got a bass, and if you look down here you'll see that bass has a play sound method so I'm going to drag that in after the do in order and you can select all kinds of sounds including some built-in ones but what I wanted to do is do the bass sound which is this bass guitar one right at the top so I click that alrighty in my first method I'm not doing anything yet so what I want to do is I want to call this George solo method so I'm going to just simply actually I want to put in a do together do in order first sorry I always like to always have all my lines of code be in some block or another, not just kind of standing out on their own. Okay, we're going to do George Solo. So let's play this and see how it comes out. Do that again. Okay, there we go. So that seems to work. Okay, now I just have to do that for uh, the other ones. Now, it's pretty obvious that each of these are going to do much the same thing. They're each going to move up and they're each going to play a sound. So... It, they're going to be kind of repetitive methods and when you get these methods that are getting repetitive it's really the same thing just doing it to different objects it becomes clear that actually a better way to approach this would be through using parameters so what we're going to do is instead of creating a separate Lennon method, Lennon Beetle method, and then a Paul Solo method, and then a Ringo Solo method. I'm going to create one method called Solo, and then we're going to use parameters to help it use that same method on each for them. Here's how it works. So, first thing I want to do is I want to create a method, new method. I'm going to call this one Solo. Okay. All right. And in this, I'm going to do much the same thing I did before. I'm going to put in a do in order. But instead of dragging in a George or a Lennon or a Paul, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a parameter that's going to represent the band member. So way over here on the right, we have create a new parameter. So I'm going to click on that. It asks us for a name. I'm going to call it just band member. It's going to be whatever the band member. And then you have to say what type it is. And this is important. Okay, because if you get the wrong type, it will get confused. Like, for instance, if right now it's clicked on number. And so you're, I'm going to get the... You know, the first thing I'm going to want the band member to do is to move up and then move down. So it's going to say number move up and down. How do I move a number up and down? That doesn't make any sense. So I have to tell it, no, no, no. This band member is of an object type. It's something you can move up and down. So make sure you do have, not just put in the right name, but get the right type. Okay. And then what I do, I now have this band member object. And I'm going to drag that in to here. And then it's going to ask, what do you want to do with this band member? Well, I want to move it up. So I go to move, up, half a meter. Okay. And again, I want the duration to be 0.5 seconds. And then I want the band member to move down half a meter. And again, the duration is only going to be for half a second. So let's take a look at how this is going to work. Okay, well, This is just sort of a part method. So I'm going to go back to my first method. I'm going to throw George Solo away. And instead, you can see here i got a new method here just called Solo. I'm going to drag that in. Okay, 
and then it asks you well, what do you want the band member to be and you can see it's just picking any kind of object right so you can actually do all kinds of goofy things but I want the band member to be George Beetle the entire George Beetle okay and if you look back at our solo method it said to go up and to go down whatever the band member is so now if I push play George Beetle should go up and down I'll do the restart on that okay so see how that works all right so you might be wondering, well, what's the advantage? It's doing the same thing as I d it did before. Well, the advantage is I don't have to create now a Lennon solo and a Paul solo and a Ringo solo. I just drag that same solo method over there, and I say, now, Lennon, Beetle, do your solo. And then I drag that same method over there, and I say, Paul, Beetle, entire Beetle, do your solo. And then... I go to band member and I say Ringo Beetle, you do your whole solo. So I don't have to rewrite four different methods. I can use the same method but pass uh, the band member object as a parameter and it'll do it to that one. So let's play this and you'll see now each, each four of them go up and down. All right, we'll do a restart so you can see that again. Now you might be noticing we're missing something, aren't we? Before I had a sound, each instrument played a sound. So I have to, I still have some more work to do with my method. So I want each instrument to play a sound. So I'm going to go back to my solo method. Um, at the same time, so I need a do together. I'm going to drag the do in order in there. I want the instrument to play a sound. Wait a second, instrument, it depends. It, each of them have a different instrument. So I'm going to need another parameter, aren't I, to represent the instrument? Because each time this method runs, it's going to be a different instrument that's going to play. So I go again to create new parameter. A method can have any number of parameters you want. I'm going to call this meth, uh, parameter instrument. Again, it's going to be an object, so make sure you have the correct type selected. Okay. Each of these instruments are going to play a sound, and these sounds are going to be different. Okay, so I'm going to have to have a method as well, or a parameter as well, for the sound. Uh, I'm going to call this, matching the textbook, music. Music's not, it's a sound. It's not a number, it's not a Boolean, it's not an, other, or an object, it's an other. And if I click other, you'll see that there are, it says string, but there are other options, and one of the options there is a sound. Okay. So, what do I want to happen? Well... I want my instrument, so I'm gonna, that's my object that's going to do something. So I drag that in after the do in order. I want it to play sound, so I have to look for play sound. Where is that? There it is, play sound. And then it asks, which sound do you want to play? And it kind of depends. So what I'm going to, there's two different things you can do. I'll show you. One is you can select expressions, and it gives you music. Music was the parameter that I had there. And now everything is perfect, right? Instrument, play sound, music, and music's going to be what it is. The other way, by the way, if you had this selected wrong, let me trash this. I'll just point this out to you. Another way to do this as well is actually, actually I can do this right from the start. If I pick any one of the objects, um, any one of the instruments, sorry, let's play bass. Okay. And I have bass, play sound. Here's the other way you can do this. Instead of dragging the parameters in, you can drag a representative object like the bass and you can say bass play your bass guitar right and then you simply replace the appropriate object so the bass is a specific example of my instrument parameter and the bass guitar sound is an actual specific example of the music parameter so there's different. So if you if you don't get these parameters right, you can drag and drop them on top of each other appropriately. So there's my whole solo method. There, band member is going to play an instrument, music, um, and so first the band member is going to go up and down. Then the instrument is going to play whatever the music is. Now if I go back to my first method, you'll notice that these parameters have automatically been added to these method calls. But right now it says none. Right, instrument is none. I have to tell it still what instrument. So uh, George Beetle had a bass, so I can select bass, and the bass is going to play the bass guitar. And Lennon Beetle had a guitar. Where is? There it is. And it's going to play guitar one. And Paul Beetle has a sax and it's going to play the sax sound. Okay. 
And finally, uh, Ringo Beetle had the Timbal's Cowbell, which is the drums, the entire thing. And it's going to play that drum sound. There we go. Okay. So now, same method being called, but different objects for the band member, different instruments, and different sounds. Okay, so let's play this. Okay, we'll restart do that one more time. It's not the most exciting concert. Alright, but you get the idea. Okay, so what I would like you to do is to follow the instructions to export this as HTML code, and you're going to be sending that in for the assignment.